about us. Good morning. My name is Jeffrey McNutt. I'm licensed spiritual practitioner and community director here at Albuquerque Center for Spiritual Living. If you're new to us this morning, I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for finding your way to us and choosing to spend some time with us this morning. At the center, our mission is to be love in action, transforming lives and transforming communities. And that lofty mission really boils down to the core things of what we do together in community. And first of all, that is to provide inspiration through services like this and other activities that we do together just to be with each other and to feel spirit within. Then we take it a little deeper and we offer groups and classes with the purpose of connection and practice. You'll hear later about spirit groups, uh, which is a program that allows us to put into practice all of this inspiration that we uh, whip up together in community. And then going even deeper, we then take our mission out into the world of transforming communities. And we have a social uplift program and, and ways of being uh, out in the world uh, making a difference. So that's, in a nutshell, what we do here. And again, I am so glad that all of you have joined us here um, at the center. Um, this morning I have an announcement to make as well. This community for weeks now has held in prayer Farid Husman. Um, and Farid is Tenzin's dad, Amani's son's father. And um, yesterday, Far uh, 
Var died and is on the next phase of his journey. And so Reverend Amani has wholeheartedly and prayerfully asked me to have you um, share any prayers and condolences that you have for the family through prayer at abqcsl.org. You can send an email through that way. She's asking that we really respect their privacy and their need to have their phones and email to be able to communicate with each other. And if we inundate that, those devices, uh, they can't operate the way that they need to. So, but she does really want that outpouring of love and support as well. And we can do that through prayer at abqcsl.org or any social media platform that you can reach out on um, that you may already be in connection with Far and uh, Amani and Tenzin and the family. You can leave uh, requests uh, through those social media platforms and they'll, they'll feel that love and, um, and that support. So my request this morning is that we come together and make this service a, a blessing um, and honor of the life of Farid. It's such a beautiful example of, of kindness and, and, and love and that we take that and, and, and let our time together uh, be for that purpose and, and bless Amani and her family as they're in this time of grieving. So with that, I'd, I'd like to ask Mary Diaguero to open us in prayer. Good morning, my beautiful friends in our spiritual community. I'm so happy to be with you here today. I am remembering that almost two years ago was the last time that I did an invocation in the sanctuary, and it was Michael Herndon that was the musician that day. So I've been thinking of him. I miss him. And my heart goes out to Reverend Amani and Tenzin and family. We love you and care for you. I'm also thinking um, this morning, before I got out of bed, I was thinking about my coming here today, and uh, I had my eyes closed still, and my cat came and brought my older, and she put her head down and kissed my lips. <laughs> and I thought, that is, it's just so sweet. That is spirit. Spirit is everywhere, um, in our animals, in the morning sunshine. And so now I ask you to uh, close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that and join me as we pray. I know that spirit is right here, that spirit that is infinite love and joy and abundance, presence, peace. It is right here. Wherever you are, we may be far apart, but we are one in spirit. Our hearts belong to each other because we are all expressions of spirit. I know that is true for me, and I know that is true for each one of you. Each one of us expresses uniquely that beautiful spirit of love and tenderness and joy and questioning and concern and peace. And I know that our service is such a precious time to come together, to be with each other, even though we're far apart, to be with each other, to support each other on our pathway to transformation. And I bless Jeff for his words that he shares about transformation. I know that my heart is open to hearing what is mine to hear 
that takes me another step closer to knowing who my true self is, and that I may love myself more. And I know that for each person listening to our words here today, to Jeff's words, that we hear exactly what we need to hear today for what our hearts are longing for, what our hearts are open to. And so it is with deep gratitude that I give thanks for Jeff and Clarissa and Jordana and each person that has created this service, Dino, and everyone that is blessed by this service. And so join me as I give thanks and we say together, and so it is. The center as well. And we are now going to move into our prayer time of lighting the candles on the altar. The beautiful Dino is behind me to light candles in honor of you. So please write your prayer requests in the comment feed. Anything that is heavy on your heart, anything that you want to celebrate, prayers for yourself, prayers for others. Go ahead and just type those into the comment feed right now so we can light candles for you. And also just put a little candle emoji or, you know, write the word candle if you don't ha want to write the specific words and we'll light a candle for you. So uh, we're going to begin by lighting a candle for Farid, blessing him on his next adventure and for Tenzin and Amani and all of Farid's friends and family who are grieving that loss right now. I want to light a candle for health and well-being for, for Michael Murphy and his father, a candle of health and well-being for Ellie Klein and Amy Wolf and one for Lori Martinez. Tammy Dugan has also asked for prayers for Tenzin and Amani and the family. Many of you have, have asked that, so we'll light a couple, couple of candles for all of them today. And a candle of remembrance for another beloved community member who passed this week, Elsa Laflamme. We love you, El Elsa. Love you, Elsa. Molly prays that we can finally conquer COVID-19. I'm lighting a candle for that, Molly. Light a candle for Vanessa Owen. A candle for Annette Madrid. Candle for Scott Miller. Blessing Scott. And for the lovely Jane Midgley. And Cindy Hilsey. Kat Gordon also sending prayers for Amani's family. And I'm sending prayers for Kat Gordon. Let's light a candle for Kat. Candle for Krista Keller. Candle for the family of Michael Herndon. Light a candle for Joylyn Hertz this morning. Candle for Brent Herrera. For Alexis Lindsay. A candle for Elaine McNutt. A 
and light a candle for Kristen Myers. Glad you're here with us today. A candle for Stephen Scalf, Kenneth and Tammy, for Brenda Briscoe, Elizabeth Layton, Rose Sandry. For Stacia, light a candle for Jesse Schwartzentruber and Brian and little baby Maine. A candle for Julie Kaysen, Lisa Crowley, and their new beautiful dog Hugo. Candle for Julie in Florida. A candle for Carmen Halsey's aunt who needs life saving heart surgery and has COVID right now. Blessings to your aunt. Perry Ann would like us to light a candle for Jake Adams. Alexis Lindsay would like a candle for her brother Bill Heath in Mexico. Molly would also like us to light a candle for all who feel isolated. She says, I feel your presence. And Stephen would like us to light a candle for Sarah in Hawaii. And a candle for Erica and Adam, also in Hawaii. And a candle for Diane Landers, recovering from COVID. And just know if you're watching this later, watching it on demand, that your prayers are included as well. Any prayers that weren't written or spoken here are all included in this beautiful, loving energy of our candle altar. And speaking of candles, I just wanted to give you a little heads up about a ritual we'll be doing a little later in the service. So if you have a candle there, wherever you're watching from, go ahead and Fetch it at some point during the service before the end of Jeffrey's message. And also a clear, a small clear glass filled with drinkable water and a, a pen and paper or something to write with would also be helpful. So we're going to just anchor all these prayers now with the singing bowl. So the theme of our service today is taking 100% responsibility for our spiritual well-being. And as this time has taught me, any, any possible way to reinforce that message will come about in its, in its time. And today is an example of that. And so I just ask for your, again, for your prayers of support for Amani and far and, and family uh, and love to Tenzin and also blessings for this community as we move forward in the service today and I could use your prayers of support um, I will do my best to further the message that Reverend Amani intended to deliver this morning and it's this beautiful message of of presence so I was reminded this morning of a, a story that Mark Nepo shares in his book. Um, More Together Than Alone. 
And Clarissa and I taught a workshop a few years back, and we included this practice and this metaphor in the workshop, and it, it was really poignant, and I wanted to remind us of that this morning. Mark writes, an old friend drove me into Santa Fe National Forest so we could walk the aspen grove. We stopped along the way to smell some ponderosa pine. I, st I stuck my nose into the crease of its bark and cupped my hands around it. The tree smelled like vanilla. We continued up the mountain. At an altitude of 10,000 feet, the temperature dropped 30 degrees. The air was clear. Walking into the grove, which covers almost 200 square miles, we could see Santa Fe and Los Alamos. We could even see Arizona and Colorado. The path was lined with small red feathery clusters known as Indian paintbrush. Soon the tall, thin aspens were everywhere, their smooth bark stretching like skin into the sky. The continuous rustle of their leaves was like an ocean of small voices arriving through the centuries. We could just make out their cry, their song, and understand their brilliance. Walking among them, touching them, listening to their creak and sway, I could feel their connectedness. Above ground, aspen grow as individual trees, but below ground, they're enlivened by one interconnected set of roots. They are the most expansive growth of trees to share a common root system. This means they are, living, they are one living organism and one living community all at the same time. This is a powerful metaphor for how inextricably knit the life of the individual is with the life of community. What happens to one tree happens to all the aspens in the grove. How do they live as one and many at the same time? How do they communicate with each other? How do they sustain each other? And this is what we're exploring in this session uh, segment that we're calling Oneness. And today, specifically, how do I take 100% responsibility for my role as the Aspen in that, in that grove? A few weeks ago, Amani, in her talk, it was during the season of Kwanzaa, and she described the value of the framework of Kwanzaa as something that is very powerfully needed at this time. And we discovered and explored that framework together. And what I recognized in myself was that it was a new framework for me, but how valuable was it to have that framework to let it rub up against what I, th what I know or what I think I know are my beliefs or my individual frameworks. So I'd like to delve into this concept of, of framework. I've often said here too that it's a miracle all of the different paths in ways that we have come together to arrive in this one community. All the different places we've come from and religious traditions that we've come from, and yet somehow here we are. How does that happen? Each of us, whether we know it or not, come to this space with a framework. It's a conditioned framework, largely by our parents and by maybe the religious institutions that we were reared in, but we have this framework that we operate from. And I wanted to give you an example of how transformation, you know, as we say, transforming lives. My life has been transformed by a willingness to allow another framework to rub up against my framework. So when you picture each of us with our own contraptional framework, like a, a box that we build around ourselves of, of wood or a, a big giant metal hoop skirt type of contraption that contains all of our beliefs and they're all contained in this framework. When we allow another framework to rub up against this framework, that's what is known as the leading edge of transformation. Perfect example of that 
is my framework. I grew up in the Lutheran religion, religious tradition, and I was forced to go to vacation Bible school every summer. And we sang this song in vacation Bible school, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And that was so ingrained into me, and it became part of my framework that I believe in, in oneness, and I believe that, that in this interconnectedness and this sameness, no matter the color of our skin or the orientation of our sexuality or our religious leanings, that fundamentally we are all one. And I thought I had that mastered, and so that part of my framework I thought was very solid. And then in, the, in light of the events of the death of George Floyd especially, we brought into this community a conversation about white privilege and white supremacy. And I went to the spirit group and rubbed against that framework. And I realized how wrong that I was in intellectually holding this, knowing that we are all one already. Reverend Drew Gro Groves also taught me a concept of both and. And so as I contemplated the rubbing together of these two concepts, I realized that this is real. In reality, we are not free, and I am not free unless we all are free. We are living in a system that is inherently, systemically not equal. So I have to hold this tension of, of knowing our oneness and recognizing that there is work to do. And I don't have to have all the answers. It is not my job to be a white savior. I have to understand my white privilege, and I have to hold my knowing of oneness and be willing to enter into conversation and be willing to transform and be willing to show up in that, in that way. So it's an example of that framework that, that I'm offering to you this morning. Today is World Religion Day. It's a day in the Baha'i faith that celebrates common themes for faiths across the world. It's one of the reasons that we are celebrating and exploring this concept of oneness together. And the Baha'i, in their effort to take 100% responsibility, celebrate the common themes throughout the world's faith traditions expressed as the perennial wisdom. This perennial wisdom is also embedded in what we study here in, in, in practice here in Science of Mind. So I wanted to share with you a new framework. And this framework, I'm going to take you through the steps of this framework and allow it to rub up against how, wherever you are right now in your, in your personal spiritual journey. This framework encapsulates the fundamentals of oneness. So see how it, see what it brings up for you. And then I'm going to invite Clarissa a little later to do a centering ritual, which will allow you to play with the things that come up during this exploration of, of, of this framework. And it's from Rabbi Ramai Shapiro from the One River Foundation. And he says that perennial wisdom can be summarized in four points. And I'm going to go through each of these four points and provide kind of a buzzword that, that's also taught here at the center within the framework of science of mind. And you'll catch on and you'll get it. What my invitation to you is, is how does this information square with where you are in taking 100% responsibility for your spiritual life? So point one, all life arises in and is an expression of the non-dual infinite life that is called by many names, ultimate reality, God, 
Tao, Mother, Allah, Dharmakaya, Brahman, Great Spirit, and hundreds and hundreds of other names. For the purpose of this exercise, I choose to call it Source. So my question to you is, how does the concept that there is one source of life, of infinite life, one source, not many, one source that goes by different, many different names, how does that apparent and present in your spiritual journey right now? Ramai, Rabbi Rami Shapiro says the second point is you contain two ways of knowing the world. I want to start with the lesser knowing called self, ego, ahem, kabir. In, um, in Science of Mind training, we uh, lovingly refer to it as to the little I, the little I, small I. That mistakes uniqueness for separation and imagines itself apart from, rather than a part of, infinite life. On one hand, it's the thing that makes us feel our expression of uniqueness as source expressing in human form, but if left unchecked, it can create that illusion of separation that keep us separate. And the second way of knowing in, in point two is a greater knowing called Atman, capital S soul, capital S self, spirit, mind, what we call the big capital I. And this intuitively knows that each finite life as a unique manifestation of infinite life, that we are here for a purpose, expressing as a facet, if you picture it as a diamond, each one of us as a facet of a diamond, and that diamond is God, source, expressing through and as us. So my question to you on that second point is, can you feel both the little I and the big I at work in your consciousness right now? How does that operate for you right now? Maybe what are the, where do you find yourself feeling separateness or feeling gr greater than or separate than or better than or inferior to? How is that little I operating right now in your, in your life? And what is your awareness of that bigger sense of being a facet in a larger, in something larger than yourself? So sit with those two for a moment. My second question on that third point is, how may they be creating either separateness or connectedness in your life right now? And point four in this framework is awakening your greater self and living this ethic is the highest goal that you can set for yourself. It's what we talk about in our mission of being love in action, actually living the awareness that not only am I an expression of self, but I am inherently connected to all of these other expressions of the one. And what is mine to do is to live into that awareness. Are you aligned with this goal for yourself? Transforming lives in our mission statement? How is your life transforming through the awareness of this? And collectively, in our mission, we talk of transforming community. What might be yours to do in that larger conversation? So just take into consciousness the overall awareness of the framework that you've, that's brought you here to be in community in this center. 
What has attracted you to, to this like-mindedness? What is your gift to bring in, in, into this space? And then on the other hand, what is the new framework if we use this one that I've just presented or any of the, the ones that you may be studying right now? What is the difference? How does this new framework rub against the one that you're used to? And where are those points that are calling for you to change? So I wanna just sit in silence for a few minutes and if you need a couple of minutes to get that glass and that candle and something to write with and something to light your candle with, this would be a good time to do that. And I just want us to sit and let this wash over us for a couple minutes. And then I'll do a little prayer and, and send you on to work with Clarissa a little bit. So right here, right now, in this moment, I allow myself to recognize this larger, infinite source of energy that goes by a thousand names and yet is absolutely, personally known to me And however that is, and however it reveals and shows itself to me, I absolutely know that it is divine mind. And as I absolutely know that divine mind to exist, I unite with it. I know that I am it expressing in this two-phased little me and big me an experience of life in all its pivots in all its challenges in all its sense of loss in all its sense of gain in the birth of Maeve Schwarzentruber and in the transition of Farid Husman, I know that each of these are expressions of the one. And that they and I are one. And so that I realize that this coming together in community, this way of being together, this power that we have in the collective of being to s able to send our love to one another, especially to Farid, especially to Tenzin, who is without his father today, and Amani, who is there with the rest of her family and Far's family to be examples of this one. I know that this framework is coming forward at this time, this opportunity to take 100% responsibility for the outpicturing of our lives individually, our lives together in this community, supporting and helping any transition, any change that is, any transformation that is called for, that we do this as one. And that ripples out, and we become aware, aware of our birthright and our obligation and our living of these principles 
to create the world that works for everyone. And so I just let all of this exploration of oneness, just this intuitive, internal sense of, of responsibility to just root itself in my soul. And I am grateful for the spontaneousness of the opportunity to be with you today and the awesome power that I feel a part of and I feel is being shared into this, into this space. So I send my love out to you and to Amani and family right now. And I release it all and call it good and together we say, and so it is. So it is now time to move into our sacred ritual. This ritual is a beautiful opportunity to connect to what that is that we want to take 100% responsibility for in our transformation. What are those qualities of the divine that we want to embody and bring more fully into the world? So if you haven't done so, you'll want to have a candle something to light it with, a glass of water, make sure it's clear glass, and water that is drinkable, and perhaps a pen and a piece of paper. This ritual combines the elements of fire and water. If you don't have a candle handy, don't worry. It can just be done with your glass of water and your intention and your imagination. So to prepare for our ritual today, we're going to do a centering meditation. So I just invite you now to get as comfortable as you can. Close your eyes. And just begin to let the mind go. Let the body go. Breathe in the air. Connect to the element of air through your breath. Ground down and feel your deep connection to the earth. As the Mayans say, listen with the eyes on the bottom of your feet. Feel your energetic roots reaching deep into the earth. And now begin to breathe deeply into your heart. Follow the breath. Where the breath goes, the attention goes. Allow your breath to guide you to your own inner sanctuary. That special place at the center of your heart that is only for you. My inner sanctuary is a beautiful secret garden where I am surrounded by flowers and aromatic herbs. What does your inner sanctuary look like? Settle into this centered space of the heart where you are completely safe, where you can rest and feel deep peace. This is the place where you can connect to the wisdom of the divine. I invite you now to ask your inner wisdom, what do I need to know right now? 
what truth is wanting to be revealed in order for me to fully realize my oneness with spirit. What qualities do you need to embody in order to know your oneness with the divine more deeply? It may help to gently and lovingly ask yourself, what is in the way? Is there a belief you are holding that is keeping you from fully experiencing the perfect, divine, magnificent beauty of you? Allow the answer to rise to the surface of your awareness. And as it does, feel free to write it down or in some way commit it to memory. And now we will open our eyes and begin our ritual. So take whatever wisdom came through and turn it into a simple affirmation. So for example, if the quality you wanted to embody was joy, your affirmation could simply be, I am joy, or the joy of God is my joy now. If a false belief rose to the surface, such as, I am not worthy, then perhaps your affirmation might be something like, I know that I am enough. So just take a minute and create in your mind or write down your powerful affirmation. This is based on what you want to claim and what you want to embody right now. Okay, and now light your candle. And position the candle in such a way that you can see the reflection of the flame in the water. I have to move mine a little bit. Sometimes it requires elevating your candle or elevating your glass so that you can see that the reflection of the flame in the water. If you don't have a candle handy, you'll just gaze into the water and just imagine a light inside of it, okay? When I do this ritual personally, I actually write three different affirmations, and I speak each affirmation nine times. But for our purposes today, we're just going to work with our one affirmation, and we're going to speak it aloud three times while gazing into the water. So I'll speak my affirmation aloud, and you just speak whatever your affirmation is aloud while you just gaze at that reflection of the light. The faith of God is my faith now. The faith of God is my faith now. The faith of God is my faith now. So what we have just done is infuse the water with those powerful words of truth. So now, drink the water.
And don't worry if you can't drink the entire glass of water in one shot. <laughs> you, can, you can drink it in segments. But this is taking... This is the act of embodying your intention, realizing it in your being, to realize that this truth is to make it real. So please share your powerful words of intention with us and with each other by typing them into the comment feed, if you so desire, if you are so willing. Because I know that your intention is my intention, and my intention is your intention. We are so inextricably linked that our personal transformation is the transformation of the whole. And so it's beautiful to share that with each other. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you for being the light that you are in the world. And remember your inner sanctuary. You can visit it as often as you like. And you have access to that wisdom of the divine. It's always right there, right there to guide you. I'm so grateful to be walking this path with you. Thank you, Clarissa. It was beautiful, and for me, what came up is I'm, a, I'm here to hold the knowing of oneness and of transformation for myself and for my community. I know that to be true for myself, and I hope that you glean something from our words and from that exercise that helps anchor you in, in knowing what is yours to do and taking 100% responsibility for your place in this beloved community in the larger world. Um, I have a few announcements to make. Um, obviously, so much is going on right now in community, and so in this community, and with Amani needing to take some time to be with her family, we are going to be taking the next couple days to um, come up with a game plan for getting through that period of time and communicating it out to you. So I really, really welcome you and encourage you to go to www.abqcsl.org. Beginning tomorrow, you'll, you'll be able to see some, um, some updates there. It's also, if you're new to this community, the place to stay connected. We have links for you on, the, on our website to join our Facebook community, YouTube, Instagram channels, to sign up for the newsletter, to sign up for our daily practice, which is delivered via your cell phone, and that's called Spirit Calling. Uh, and, as, and there's so much more there. Dino will, will talk about how to get in touch with practitioners in a minute. Again, abqcsl.org and especially to sign up for the newsletter because we will be communicating um, a lot of news that's going on in this community over the next uh, few weeks there. It's so make sure that you're hooked up and linked in with us there. Uh, another one of those uh, connection points is spirit groups. And spirit groups are forming again. Uh, if you're new to spirit groups, they are our our way of getting together in small groups and practicing the principles that we that we inspire you with each week here. Uh, this winter session, we have several opportunities for you to be together, sharing your spiritual wisdom and exploring common interests. There is a book study group, a writing group, and a sacred practice group coming online, new groups. There's some old, older groups that are continuing on as well. And these are hosted by our practitioners and members of our community who have, um, who own these aspects of spirituality in their own lives and, and are just dying to share them in community with you. So uh, you can go to abqcsl.org slash catalog beginning tomorrow and the new catalog will be up around noon tomorrow. 
So all next week you can kind of preview those spirit groups and begin signing up. The sign up link is in, is in the catalog. So if any groups that interest you, sign up and you'll receive a Zoom link and then you can, beginning next Sunday, you can begin to check them out. Each group is held on a different day and so you can go check it out and if it's something you wanna stick with, then you become a part of that, of that group. So abqcsl.org, either in the next step section or um, abqcsl.org slash catalog. Okay, uh, so as I said, newsletter, keep your eye out for weekly newsletter because there's so much new information that will be coming out around um, town hall, community events, and around um, spirit groups, around everything that's going on with these services. And um, with another uh, offering that we're going to be beginning and it's about building intentional multicultural community. So I want you to take a look at this announcement from Amani and then realize that we'll be in touch with you around the date if that should change. But here's a look at what that's going to, that conversation will be. Hello, beloved. I'm here to invite you to help me and the rest of our community build intentional multicultural community. And what that means is to double down on the value we hold for radical welcome, inclusion, and diversity. And we've begun that work through our spirit groups that have focused on dismantling white supremacy and unpacking what me and white supremacy looks like for our white folks and for uh, support, spiritually grounded support for our BIPOC folks. And what I believe it's time for now is for us all to come together and to double down on this work of dismantling at white supremacy in the collective, but also in our own belief systems and how it impacts us personally. So we will be doing this work together beginning the fourth Mondays of the month from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Our first group will be this January 24th, uh, which will be the first fourth Monday in this year. We will be doing all of this work right now on Zoom and everyone is invited to participate. Um, and when I say everyone, I mean everyone. People who are already participating in our ABQCSL community, all of the folks interested in and already doing the poverty alleviation work through our Circles program, and those beyond who are ready um, to do a deeper dive into how these injustices in um, our society impact us personally, get in the way of our spiritual growth and what we can do in our individual lives and to be a stand for radical welcome and inclusion in our lives. I um, know that this is not easy work, but I know it is required as people deeply committed to their own spiritual transformation. This is also the labor of love we must engage in. Um, what you can expect during our time together is we will all gather, all of us, all of the different cultures and ethnicities will gather um, for a few minutes at the top of our time together. And then we will go into breakout rooms, breakout groups based on our cultural heritage. And we will have um, different conversations in those private spaces because we are impacted differently by white supremacy, by racism, by social injustice. And so we need safe space to be able to do that work. And so you can expect to be um, provided spiritually grounded support, resources and tools where you can unpack the micro and macro aggressions that are unique to BIPOC folks, where white folks can begin to explore um, in a safe and supported space um, their own unpacking that needs to happen and where they sit inside white supremacy and privilege. And we will do all of this work knowing that not only will it transform and grow ourself, but it will also transform and grow our local community and it will transform and grow our ability to be a part of that transformation for the world. Intentional multicultural community building. It begins right here in our own consciousness and our own willingness to be supported in this work. I hope you will join me 
In order to let us know you're coming, please email socialuplift at abqcsl.org. Again, that's socialuplift at abqcsl.org uh, so we know how many to expect. And um, I really look forward to doing this with you. I love you so much. Good morning. It's a uh, good morning. It's always a pleasure to be with you. My name is Dino, and I am a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the center. I wanted to bring to your attention some of the services that we provide uh, in regards to prayer. If you'd like to log on, we offer prayer at abqcsl.org. You can leave your prayer request there, or if you'd like, you can um, go onto the website and look for the tab about us, and you can find a listing of practitioners that are willing to meet with you or talk with you on the phone. So please know that's available to you at all times. At this time, if you'd like to join me in a closing prayer, as we close out our service today, that would be so lovely. Close your eyes with me if you feel comfortable. Take a deep breath. Take another deep breath. And just settle into this moment. Take this opportunity to be with our community, to be together in prayer. Take a moment to silence your morning, your mind, meet your heart. Provide a few minutes for yourself. Come together with yourself Give yourself this moment, this time, this precious time of life. Let us acknowledge that there is but one spirit, one mind, one heart, one love, one great love. And that great love is generated from our heart space and provides us the vibration that we need to move out into the world and spread goodwill. Let us take a moment to affirm that which we so desire, peace of mind, calm heart, peace and love for others. As we hold Tenzin and his family in the light of love, Throughout this day, let us remember that we are one, that we are with spirit, that we are alive, that we're so grateful to be alive. And let us acknowledge each other in our households. Let us be kind. Let us remember to smile and be joyful and be happy and to keep a good thought. And let us be the expression of love. And so it is. If you'd like to join me in the affirmation as we close our service today, I know that I am one with the one. Today I walk in love. Thank you so much. We love you so much. See you next Sunday. Bye now.